Have you ever been editing and made a mistake that actually turned out in your favor? Well, that's exactly what happened in one of my recent YouTube live streams. So in this video, I want to show you a happy accident that occurred during the live stream and I ran with it. And we ended up creating a dreamy winter wonderland scene. So if you want to learn how to take a winter scene that's dull and gray and looks like this and turn it into something that looks like that, then you're in the right place. I'll show you how to do just that with Lightroom and Luminar Neo. So if you're ready, let's get started. So this is a beautiful hoarfrost, right? We get these beautiful frosts here. Now, unfortunately, this one is a JPEG, so I don't know how much detail there might be in here, but it's not overexposed. So we might be able to get some detail out of here, or we could go a different way with this one. Um, this one is really neat because it is all white and immediately I see black and white here. So, so I'm going to do something a little different here. I'm going to change it to black and white because I see that it's, it's mostly about contrast here and I'm going to go to an extreme. I'm going to take the whites up. I want it to almost clip. So I've got the clipping warnings on. Okay. So there's nothing clipping. It's just to the border here, but I want to get this, this edge white and let's, let's just run with this whole idea of, you know, this winter white scene. I love this idea. Okay. I want to give it some clarity and some texture because look, let's look at this here. It keeps zooming into 200. Let's look at the amount of texture here. Okay. So I'm going to take these back. Okay. So see how just bringing up the whites. Okay. I could bring more black as well. Right. Clarity. Look what clarity does. Okay. It enhances the contrast between white and black, okay? So it's doing a nice job. Texture does nice as well. Dehaze also, okay? So take let's take a look at what these are doing when I back out, okay? Because I might use a combination of all three, okay? Dehaze starts to do those weird things in the sky again. So I'm going to avoid dehaze. I'm going to go with clarity. It's doing a really nice job of making sort of these branches stand out that have the frost on them and texture as well, right? I like the idea of having the sky pure white and I like the idea of having a um, vignette to lighten the edges as opposed to darken, okay? So like I put a, a dark edge vignette on the last one, you can do that with the effects panel and just bring the amount up instead of down. Okay, so my trick with the vignettes here is change it to feather zero and set your size and roundness. I wanna get, make sure I don't cut the trees off. <sighs> my mouse is doing weird things, okay. Then change the feather. On this kind of thing, I actually want the feather a little bit lower because I want it to go to white on the edges, right? Maybe not so extreme. Let's back it off a little bit. And I don't want to fade so much. Actually, that looks kind of cool. Look at that. Let's back it out just a little bit. Look what that's doing. That's actually really cool. I really like it. Now this bush bugs me. So we could crop it a little bit to get rid of some of this foreground. I feel like that's better, okay? And then I would just use the clone tool. Again, not generative in this case. We don't need generative to get rid of a couple of sticks and just let it remove them. The new Lightroom cloning tool does an amazing job right along there. So I'm just keeping this area clean. I want it to be just the snow and white. Oops. It wants me to remove my junk on my computer. Not now. There we go. Okay, so we've gone from that, okay, which is a beautiful scene, to that. To me, that's print worthy. Okay, now the other thing that I would do is finish this with Luminar Neo, right? Because we've added a lot of texture here, right? 
I want to soften it though. So it's kind of this like balance. It's a seesaw balance between adding the texture, which I have here and sharpening and then softening it for an effect. So I'm going to take this one straight over to Luminar Neo because I know what tool I'm going to use. I'm probably going to jump right over to Mystical. Okay, so I want to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments, right? These are the settings that I use, right? So when I'm going directly to Luminar, I take a TIFF and these settings are set up in your Lightroom preferences working with plugins, right? So I'm going right over to Luminar to add my finishing. So this is typically my workflow. I do my basic editing in Lightroom, get the contrast and the brightness and details how I want it. And then I come to Luminar for finishing the image, okay? So I already know I'm gonna jump down to here and I'm already thinking mystical, okay? I'm gonna try mystical and Orton effect and see which one I like better. Cause I wanna give it a dreamy effect, okay? So I'm gonna amplify this, this white dreaminess. See that? Now it's like fading out on the edges, right? I can do things like lift the shadows a bit more with this one if I want, right? Look at how cool that is. Okay, so that's not, that's cool. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna remember that one. Now to switch them up, what I'm going to do, uh, so I can compare them, watch me do this now, okay? I'm gonna duplicate the layer, okay? And it's gonna duplicate all the same edits, but on this layer, I'm going to go remove the mystical, okay? And instead I'm going to apply, let's try Orton effect, okay? Orton effect, almost always you have to bring the brightness down quite a bit. Okay, so it's giving me a very different kind of look, but we want to compare, right? So let me just maybe take the contrast down. Let's take this one to extreme, right? So now this one is Orton effect, right? The one on the top. So now all I have to do is hide this layer to toggle them, okay? And I can export like this with this layer on using the Orton effect. I can hide this layer. There's mystical. Now I can export. Oh no, I have to go back to Lightroom. <laughs> Sorry. If I was just in Luminar, I could export two versions, but I'm in, I'm in as a plugin, right? So I'm just trying to decide which one I want to use. So that's mystical. Tell me a vote. And that's Orton effect. Hmm, let's look in this area here. I don't see a lot of difference. I think mystical is more faded. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's see the tops of the trees. Okay, that is mystical. And that is Orton. I think I like mystical. So I'm gonna go with mystical, I think. So I'm gonna remove this layer. Um, okay, uh, Terry's asking, how do I do a white vignette in Luminar? Same way, okay? So you just go to vignette and you take the amount to the plus side, okay? So I'll show you, right? So there's the edge vignette, right? So left is black, right is white. But the advantage of the a vignette in Luminar is that you can position it, right? So with Luminar, you can say, okay, I want a vignette more on one side than the other, right? Whereas with Lightroom, you cannot. If you want to do the same thing in Lightroom, you have to use a radial filter as your vignette, right? So same thing, plus, okay? Now, is there anything else I want to do while I'm in here, okay? I really, really like this, but we could take it to the next level and do something interesting on the edges as well, okay? So I've got quite a few sort of grunge edge, um, images that I could add to the edge. Let me try this one. I'm not sure if it's gonna even do anything. Uh, I definitely want to invert that, right? And we need to lighten, there we go. So basically what it's doing is it's just making some edges, but it's not really doing the same. I could have put this on instead of the white vignette. Um, that would have done a neat thing here, but don't think it's really doing anything here. Or we could add a texture around the edge. Let me just find a texture that might be kind of neat. 
maybe this one. So kind of like a paintbrush texture, okay? So I'm gonna apply it. Let's just stretch it to fit. And I want it still to be black and white. And I usually, ooh, ooh, look at that happy accident. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting as well. So see, this is a this is what's called a happy accident. I put this texture on that's blue and then applied it thinking I would put it on the outside and here I am putting it on, on the inside. Okay, so I was thinking I would put it around the edges, right? But I like that way better. Isn't that kind of neat? What do you guys think? That one's got a lot of brush strokes in here. So if I use overlay, I might dial it down a little bit. And it's taking away from the hoarfrost. But this one is just giving a really neat... Oops, let's fill that. It's just giving a really neat sort of subtle blue texture, which is kind of what I was looking for on the other one, but with a texture overlay. Look at the neat brush strokes happening over here. Well, that was a happy accident, I have to say. Look at that. Uh, I kind of like it. I'm going to go with it. Okay, so I came here to do mystical, and now I've ended up adding a texture overlay that's given me some blue. Okay, I could have done a similar thing with toning, and I still can, where I can add to the shadows. This is the same thing as color grading in Lightroom. Okay, so I can add some blue into the shadows. Okay, so I gotta find the right blue. It doesn't give you an option for midtones. Okay, so Lightroom has three. Um, versus Luminars only has two options, okay? So I could add some blue into the shadows or I could add some blue into the highlights. I think I was at about 220. Eh, I like it the way it is. I think that's really, really strong. Really cool, okay? Oh, I'm on the wrong layer. See, look, I was trying to add some highlights, but I was on the wrong layer. All right, let's try that again. All right, shadows. Here we go. Oh, that's better. Okay, let's get some blue. So that's adding to the effect. And highlights. How does that feel? Feels cold, right? That's kind of what I'm going for. So let's let's do that. There we go. Uh, the other thing that I love about Luminar, one of the other tools I love, is details because it allows you to do things like really hone in on um, which things you want to sharpen in detail. Okay, so I could go medium details. See how that picks out some of the branches. I could go large details. Actually, that does a really great job as well. Small details brings out a little too much of that hoarfrost, almost too much detail. But after the softening, giving it a little bit of extra detail here, right? Okay, so it's still soft on the edges, but we're getting a little bit of that detail back, that feel of that crunchiness of the um, hoarfrost. So let's just see a quick before. This is what we brought from Lightroom, which was already pretty cool, and after. I really, really like that. I hope Tom is watching. I'm going to make sure Tom sees this because he should do this and hang this on his wall because this is really pretty. But you see how experimenting and just kind of going, hmm, what if I try a texture on this? My idea was the texture on the outside, and by changing the blend modes, I accidentally got something really cool, right? So you can stumble upon things. So now we have the two different versions, one from Lightroom and then one from Luminar. Now I could have done a similar thing with the blue tone like I was showing you with the color grading in Lightroom, but adding that texture 
and the the, the mystical, I couldn't have added a texture in Lightroom. I'd have to go to Photoshop to do that. And there isn't a really nice sort of way to soften things or give it like a glow. I would have had to go to Photoshop as well. So I love doing Luminar as a plugin to do those things where I'm going to finish an image, okay? If I want a truly non-destructive uh, editing though, I would have gone to Photoshop first as a smart object. So I went there thinking I was just gonna do mystical and then ended up adding something else. Right? So if you want truly non-destructive editing from Lightroom to Luminar, you want to make sure you go to Photoshop in between. If you enjoyed this tip for creating dreamy winter images, join in my next live stream. We're here first and third Sunday of every month. Check the live schedule for times. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click one on the screen now. Until next time, stay warm.